Hey lovelies, it's your girl Mina Sanaa. Welcome to my channel if you're new and welcome back if you're not. And if you've never seen me before, because you're new, that means you are subscribed, so let's subscribe. <laughs> so the purpose of this video is just to let y'all know your girl has been going through it. I, um, we went to North Carolina for my sister's basketball trip and she started feeling sick toward the end of the trip and we're thinking, okay, she just got little sniffles, but we got tested promptly from when we came back home, promptly when we came back home, and she tested positive. My mom, brother, and I tested negative, but the kicker is like two, a day or two later, I start to get the sniffles and now I'm sick and blah, blah, blah. So boom, push comes to shove. My mom's saying go up there with your sister. So now I'm in here in quarantine with my sister. And my little brother also started feeling sick. So now he has it. So that all that means all of, all three of us have it. Well, my mom until I, well, it does not have it and God willing will not get it. Um, so it's definitely, I've definitely been, you know, there's been some ups and downs, it's a roller coaster. But the real purpose of this video is to talk about the whole like can't smell, can't taste thing. So boom, I'm just gonna say it. People who sound like they can't smell, you cannot smell anything. At least I can't. At first, my sister, they said like only a small, not a small, but only a percentage of people will lose their scent and taste, but I'm a part of that percentage. Uh, first, it was my sister, and I was thinking maybe, you know, I won't lose my sense of taste or smell. But if I do, it'll just be a, due to congestion, because as y'all can hear, I'm a little bit congested. And, yeah, uh, my sister, when she stopped being congested, she still couldn't smell or taste. So I was just like, please don't let this be me, too. And unfortunately, well, not unfortunately, I'm still a bit congested. But, yeah, I'm in the same boat now. I can't smell or taste to a certain extent. Um, I can't smell anything at all. Like, well, I couldn't smell anything at all. Like, in the first two days... Oh, by the way, you guys, it's been like... I want to say four days. It's been four days. Um, yeah, it's been four days. And the first two days were the hard... No, five days. It's been five days. The first two days were... The first two days were the hardest just because, like my this virus was kicking my butt like I couldn't sleep I had like really like my brain felt like jello in like a a plastic container you just anything I did shake it up and also I was sleeping downstairs because my sister tested positive so I didn't want to be up here with her so I was sleeping on the couch and that for me the key to my recovery is sleep all the time so if I'm not sleeping good I'm not getting better um but yeah first two days were worse but now i'm on to like a more manageable state now as you can hear i just sound like congested and stuff like that i'm not really uncomfortable it's just really like all in the phlegm i think that's where the covid is hiding for me it's in my mucus but yeah i back to the whole smell and tasting i can i just recently started at first it was like nothing i was getting nothing like i would be smelling stuff like like trying to really smell and I could smell nothing and it made me want to cry but like after the first few days um I started to be able to smell like it was actually this candle that I started to be able to smell because I was just lighting them for like the lighting of it for like the vibe um and I was smelling I was like this this smells like flowers because just the night before my brother and sister going like my mom bought us these candles and they were choosing which one who would take which and they're like, well, no matter me, both don't smell any, like, smell like anything. So I'm thinking she just bought, like, candles for decor, but me not remembering we can't smell or taste. So when I smelled this candle, y'all, I was pressed. I was telling my mom, like, mom, I was sniffing, like, not opening the door and sniffing without a mask, but, like, I would crack the door a little bit and be, like, sniffing. I'm like, mom, what are you making, fish? And then she would be like, yeah, and I was like, <laughs> I can smell again, but I quickly found out that just because I could smell didn't quite mean, and it was not even like a strong sense of smell. Like I could smell faint, like really like, I could smell like a whiff of it. Like when somebody smells really good and they walk past you and it's like, not that exact moment when you smell their good perfume or cologne, but like a few moments after that, when it's like, it smell like the shadow of what they smell like, the shell of what they smell like. So that's what it's like. It's like a really fleeting thing. Um, but I quickly learned that I could not taste. Like I could, 
and when I say you can't taste, you can't taste flavors. Like you can taste, you can, it's like, I'm gonna say sensations, but if something is salty, if something is sweet, if something is sour, if something is um, strong like ginger, garlic, or an onion, like you can sense all of that. You can't taste the flavor in it. Like if you eat some spaghetti, what you're gonna taste is like the, like the tang from the tomatoes. And that's it. And you're gonna feel the texture. So like eating while not being able to taste is definitely been being yeah, it's been weird just because I like don't I know you're not supposed to eat to, for your taste buds, you eat because you need to eat, but like eating is good, food is good. Food is good. So when you can't taste the food, it really feels like a strange thing. Like I told my sister, I feel like I was eating slime. Like whenever I eat certain stuff, I feel like I'm eating not inedible foods, but luckily I have recently regained a little bit of my taste as well. Like this is like the last yesterday actually. Like yesterday's when I really started being able to taste my food, like the flavor of it. But some like it depends on if something has like a strong flavor, I can if it's like when I say strong, I'm talking like it's really strong. If something has a strong flavor, I can taste it. But if it's something that has like kind of like a, a weak flavor, it's really hard for me to taste it. It's like I be trying to like taste it. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Everybody knows what I'm talking about. Like you just kind of like smell your own breath. Um, but yeah, I have to like really try really hard to taste it. But yeah, so I'm starting to think that my my losing my like taste and smell was linked to my um, congestion um, because I'm still congested. And as I become less congested, I can taste a little bit more and stuff like that. But I also, I'm starting, I'm start, I'm like in the middle. Like, I believe that it's because of my congestion and because, like, it's like this is a symptom that I'm having of COVID-19. Um, and, yeah. Yeah. So that's the whole smell of taste thing. But now I'm going to tell y'all how I got COVID-19. So y'all know who I got from my sister. But how she got it was that one of her teammates um, went to school and not gonna name any names at the school or anything like that. Went to school because this is like basketball, so they need to play basketball and stuff. And she, uh, I guess they notified the school that she, her family had come in to contact with COVID-19. And the school did what they were supposed to. They emailed out to um, everybody who was in their pool of like, it was their responsibility to let know. They let the people who they were responsible for know that this girl had come into contact with it. And that, not exactly who it was, but there has been someone who came in contact with it. But the AAU team were like this other school team because they're doing like this weird thing for basketball players because of the pandemic. Um, the other the team that she plays on, that was my, my sister's on, she apparently didn't tell them, her family didn't tell the coach or anyone else that she had come into contact with it. And she still went on, went to the um, tournament that weekend in North Carolina. And so like they were, and you know basketball players, like don't get me wrong, it's like a really strange time for senior students, athletes who are playing sports because they need to get, that's, this is how they plan to go to college. And they don't have any, like, the footage that they quite need yet. They haven't gotten all the looks that they're gonna get. So it's a big deal for them. So they've been trying to like work it out so that they you can play with your mask on. But in this game of basketball, I'm um, not gonna lie, this, the audience does a pretty good job at like keeping their masks on except for this one lady in another North Carolina tournament. Her mask was off and she was yelling. I'm all, my mom tried to get me to record. I was like, mom, no. But um, yeah, that was very scary. I was like, this lady is standing up fully yelling. Like I know her spittle is moving, projecting more than six feet, honey. Like, ugh. Anyway. But yeah, the play, like the spectators have been doing a pretty good job except for her. But the players, when they're running and stuff like that and sweating, the masks slip. And, like, depending on your position, you have to get really close to other players. So it was definitely a high-risk sport for contacting COVID-19. But the reason it all works is because of the honor system. And, uh, of course, like, of, like, the coaches testing their players and making sure everybody's tested and stuff like that. But it's the honor system, nonetheless. Like... For you not to, for your family and yourself not to say anything, knowing you've been exposed, like putting other people at risk, it's very, very 
it's selfish. Don't get me wrong. I know and I feel bad and I sympathize, but like you would have had to sit that tournament out until you found out you were negative or something like that or set practice out until you found out you were negative so you don't sabotage other people's chances. Like, and don't get me wrong. I don't want to like bash anybody too harshly or anything like that, but I think this is just really, it's a slippery slope. Like this is just all just to say like not saying something like you, if you have like, if you don't say something, knowing you come into contact with it, I know it feels weird to say or even canceling plans because you may have come into contact with it. You need to do that because this is a slippery slope. Like one person gets it now, boom, five people. Could I could have gotten my me, and my brother could have gotten my. We went to my dad's house like after we tested negative, and he we were around my dad and his friend. And my sister lives there, my brother lives there, and then my to my nieces and nephews came over like days after. Like that is a big we went to go pick something up. We weren't we didn't it was not like a you know we were trying to we, we it had to be done, so it was not something we just wanted to do just because. But yeah, like it's just a slippery slope. Like luckily, um, I haven't heard anything about my dad's results yet, but it's just a slippery slope. So you guys have to, we have to be careful. I understand people want to do what they want to do. Okay, but if you're going to do things, do them like with COVID-19 in mind. Like you can't just, you know, oh, I'm just going to tip my mask. What did you say? Like keep your mask up at all times because this is a slippery slope. Like, please, 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 please. You don't want to be in your room for two weeks. I have been, like, kind of going back and forth about even making this video. Just because I was like, do people really want to know about COVID-19? But I mean, like, we all, like, who doesn't want to know about COVID-19? Like, that's how I feel. Um, but yeah, so throughout the rest of my quarantine, I will be making videos about, you know, my experience being, like, 20 years old with COVID-19. Um, and of course my experience is not your experience, but I definitely want to share this with you guys just so people can understand that it's real. If people want, if people dying, um, isn't enough for people to feel like it, it's okay. Like I was saying, um, if people dying isn't enough for people to feel like this is a real thing, I don't know what it is, what it is, what it won't, but I do know, I just want to share, do a little bit of something so people can really understand it and while my case is not as severe or has not been as severe in July as other people's um uh it's still pretty like daunting like being in your room for this long also being sick for this long it's a it, there's a whole there's a whole lot of stuff I never considered like not gonna lie in the beginning of this I was pretty ignorant and I was like oh we're in our room for two weeks <laughs> I would do it. Serve me. Take me out. Like, I don't want to be here. But, like I said, that's something I'll talk about in another video. Um, I hope that you guys follow along in my co my COVID chronicles. Um, and I hope that you learn something and enjoy them. And, yeah, if you have COVID-19 or know anybody who's had COVID-19, like, I need tips for me personally, but for other people who are going to see this too, like, in the comment, tell me what you did or what you didn't do to help you, like, beat this and quick. Or how long did you have it? Because I know so I know somebody who had it for three weeks instead of two. But, yeah. So just let me know in the comments any advice you have for me. And I'll see you tomorrow.